Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So there is an issue that I want to talk about today that a lot of people have identified, but not really provided a good fix for. That is the four sticks of DDR5 XMP profile failure to boot. If you already know what I'm talking about, feel free to skip ahead to the end of the video where I will walk you through the settings to get your 64 gigabytes of RAM working properly. For those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, here is a quick version. Now, Intel's Alder Lake CPU unlocks the use of DDR5, which brings with it much faster speeds. Intel only officially supports up to 4,800 megatransfers per second. And for the purposes of this video, to reflect what is shown in BIOS, I am gonna be using megahertz instead. So 4,800 megahertz. Anything above that is technically an overclock, even though the RAM manufacturer claims higher speeds. It's like Bugatti claiming the Veyron can do 257 miles per hour, but the speed limit is set to 75 miles per hour. Now think of XMP as an abandoned runway with the speed limit of 257 miles per hour, allowing your Veyron to hit its advertised speeds. XMP takes your RAM's rated speeds and timings and applies it into your BIOS and you are off. This works fine and dandy for two sticks of DDR5 up to any speed. Now I recently took two sticks of Team Group T-Force Delta 6400 megahertz RAM all the way up to 6667 and was able to tighten up the timings. Now you can watch that video up here whenever it releases. It might not be released yet, but whenever it does, it'll be up here. So what's the issue then? Well, the problem shows itself when you add two more sticks of DDR5, especially two more sticks of identical but unmatched DDR5. Now I've got four unmatched sets here. Two uh, 2 by 16 Corsair Dominators rated at 5600 megahertz and the same size and speed for the Trident Z5s here. So let's clear the CMOS, load these sticks in and try to replicate the problem that we're having and then get to the solution. All right, everything's cleared, they're installed. So let's go ahead and turn on and see what we get right away here. Now there hasn't been an issue with this portion of it. This should start up just fine. It's what we get from this startup that's the problem. And what we do after that with XMP that actually is the issue. That's what it looks like, there it goes, okay. So there's our video and I turn my monitor on. Okay, so now we get the error here that says, you know, we have a different memory configuration. Go ahead and head into the BIOS and set it up. So let's do that and let's see what it's running at. Okay, so it loads up fine, and you can see here that it's running at 3600 megahertz. Well, that's garbage. So let's apply XMP and get what we paid for, right? No. Doing so is going to cause a boot loop that ends up back into BIOS just like this with the memory configuration error booting into safe mode. Well, not Windows safe mode, but the BIOS safe mode or it'll get stuck trying to train the memory and it'll just stay with that kind of amber light there and it won't do anything, it won't loop at all. Now this exact same thing happens with these Trident Z5s as well. Now I know that there are some of you out there watching this begging me to get to the solution, so let's get to it. All right, so before I show you all the settings to get everything to work as advertised, I wanna give a quick shout out to Store974 here in Doha for providing me with all of this very, very expensive RAM. This video would not be possible without their support. So I would like to give them a quick shout out and say if you guys want any gaming gear or any computer components, that's the place to go in Doha. Now, if you do go there, you can go to their website, walk into the store, or download the app. If you do purchase something there, you can use my code, which is Bartman's Bits. It gives you 3% off, and 3% of your purchase also comes to helping grow this channel. Now, onto those settings. Now, once you're back into the BIOS, you will want to head to, in this case, I'm gonna be using the ASUS board, and this is not, um, this is the ROG Strix board, so it's kind of their mid-tier, I guess. So some of the settings might be different if you're using something like MSI or Gigabyte. Hopefully you can navigate through your BIOS and find the same settings and change them as I do here. So for the AI Overclock Tuner, we are gonna set XMP1. Now, right away, you can see that um, XMP shows up and you can see it says DDR5 5600 36 36 36 76 at 1.25 volts. That's great. That is what this memory is rated for. The timings, the speed, the voltage, everything. 
but this will not work. And at this point, if you were to exit, save and exit, you would end up in that loop. So avoid it, don't do that. We're gonna change some more settings first before you reboot. So let's head down to, we don't have to worry about anything else here. No timings or anything. We're just gonna leave it with the XMP profile because that's what we're after. What we are gonna do is change the DRAM VDD voltage from 1.25 or whatever your XMP profile for your RAM is. It might be 1.2, might be 1.25. We're gonna change it to 1.3 and then change VDD Q voltage to 1.3 as well. Now, normally you'd be adding voltage here to overclock above your rated speeds, but here we're adding just a touch for stability. Now this next setting was the key to getting this to work. Head to the advanced memory voltages page here and you can see it says PMIC voltages and right now XMP has set that to sync all PMICs. Now we don't want that. We don't want them all synced together and I think that's part of the reason for it failing. So we're gonna set this to buy per PMIC and what that'll do is let the motherboard kind of, or the memory controller dictate what voltages it should be sending to each individual stick. Now it's all gonna stay at 1.3 for the BDD and BDDQ, and that's fine, we want all those to be at 1.3, but for everything else, it's gonna be able to adjust, adjust them individually. And you may think there's gonna be a whole bunch more, but that's it. All we're gonna do now is save changes and reset. When that comes up, you're gonna see a lot of stuff has changed but you didn't actually change anything. That's because you set the XMP profile. Leave all that as is. Hit okay and cross those fingers. So it's probably gonna go through this. Uh, yeah, there you go. It already went through once, went right to the amber light and then back. And now it's gonna do its training here. Now I have had this go for quite a while before it actually works. You have to remember that it is checking four sticks of RAM. It goes a lot faster if you're only using two. Did it restart? I can't quite see over there. There you go. Straight in. Now, to verify this, I am gonna go all the way into the OS and we're gonna check it to make sure that it reflects in something like uh, CPU Z or you can look in the system info and see what it says on there. Now I have had on occasion that stick in, not a boot loop, but it does just sit there trying to train the memory and it's like it gets stuck. So what you have to do there is power down, remove the RAM, let it sit outside. It's like it gets rid of its own memory. <laughs> then put it back in, power back on, and more than likely it's gonna go straight through on that attempt. But more often than not, it did come up on the first try for me. So after booting, we're gonna check to make sure that your speeds are accurate in something like CPU Z, and then run a memory benchmark like uh, IDA64 or Memtest86. Uh, and DDR5, 64 gigabytes, quad channel, 2800 for the frequency, so double. So 5600. And for our clocks, we have 36, 36, 36, 76, which is what it is rated for. Now, once you have verified this, run your benchmarks and then load up your usual game or software to make sure you don't have any crashes. If you do experience crashes, then you might wanna try a lower frequency or slightly, and I mean slightly, raising up that DRAM voltage, the VDD and VDDQ. Too much voltage can cause damage, so don't go too far with that. Now, hopefully this gets you up and running until a BIOS update fixes this issue. Now, what I'll do real quick just so you can see that this actually works for both of these sets of RAM is I'm gonna power down, leave everything as is. So I'm not gonna clear anything, pull these sticks out, put in the Trident Z5s and see if it boots straight into the OS. Now these are the only two sets that I've tested this on. I haven't done anything with different speeds, any higher speeds. So, for you guys out there that do have higher than 5600 megahertz RAM sticks, 
definitely try this out and see if it works. Let me know in the comments. If it doesn't, then I might have to get my hands on four sticks of that um, the T Force Delta, which is 6400 megahertz. Might try that. See how that one works. There you go. So without changing anything, nothing in the BIOS, that XMP profile worked for the Trident Z5s as well. And looks like DDR5, 64 gigabytes quad channel, 2800 megahertz for the speed. So 5600 at 36, 36, 36, 76, just like I had it set up for the Dominators. That's gonna do it for this video. And I really hope that this got you up and running. Nothing is worse than spending all of that money to get four sticks of RAM, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and then only using half of it. So I hope this helps out. Now, if it didn't work for you, let me know in the comments and we can find a solution. Thanks guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.